So today I will be going over the Alpha Trend Suite. I'll also be picking a day that will go down in history as today we have crashed to $30,000 when we just recently had a high of $65,000. Now on this uh, chart you can see we do have the Alpha Trend Suite and above here is all our other indicators from Trading Alpha. Um, let's go over the green and red bars first. Okay. As you can imagine, green means that an uptrend is intact and red means that a downtrend is intact. Okay. Now a few notes about how, how I like to play trends is I don't like to get into a trend unless I have a high probability that the trend is very strong, intact, and um, you know, it's going to carry me a lot further, uh, most likely, right? High probability. Um, what I don't like is to get chopped up to buy and then sell, buy and sell. You know, when I buy, I want a higher probability. So the first thing that people say to me is, okay, well, and I'm getting to that later. I mean, there's going to be a point made, but people will say to me, the biggest questions they have is, okay, well then John, how come the bars are red right here and they're red right here, even though the price action was going up? And let me tell you, just like I said, I like to catch the strong uptrends and let me show you the power of this. They can focus on these little two points or they can zoom out and realize that we actually we actually kept the green bars all the way since nine or 10,000 over here. Okay, <clears throat> there's 10,000. And it stayed green the whole time. Okay, if you take out the other signals and you just look at the uptrends and downtrends, this should have told you that the trend was intact and nothing changed and only here do we, ha do we have some question. And whenever we have some weakness, I am totally okay foregoing a little bit of upside right at the very bottom to make sure that I catch the rest of the move. And that's the power in the green and red bars is that when they do start, there's a high probability that you're in for a good ride. That's why Shardy loves them so much and always talks about, you know, uh, you know, this asset or that asset just printed a green bar because it's exciting. It might be the start of a huge move. Okay. So forgive the indicator a little bit and let's call this just the cost of doing business. And it's a cheap cost at that, isn't it? Next, we'll move on to the signals. Okay. Let me zoom in here. You can see that we have um, a local topping signal, local potential topping signal, and it's orange and it's got a T above it. Then we have a um, local potential reversal and it is yellow and has an R above it. Okay. And these yellow ones, just like the orange ones are signaling that price action should move to the downside. Conversely, we also have reversal bars that are turquoise that are also labeled with an R and they are the same thing. That's a potential, uh, potential reversal to the upside, just like it did. Then you get a yellow one reversal to the downside, blue one reversal to the upside and so forth. Now I know what you guys are asking. You're asking the second, <clears throat> excuse me, most question that I get asked about the alpha trend suite is John, how come it fails over here? Okay. And let's pick out another one right here. This yellow one and the topping signal should have gone to the downside, right? So right there and then right here again. Now I'm going to teach you a little tip that will completely change this tool into pretty much the, I'm going to call it the best indicator on the market. Okay. Watch this. All of these signals hit if you use one simple rule and that's the rule of confirmation. I'm sure you've learned about it and you've heard about it in trading and it's very real. So how does this work with using the alpha trend suite with confirmation? Well, I've got a simple, simple, simple rule. Whenever you get a signal, whether it be an R to the upside, an R to the downside or the T's, you have to look at the very next bar. That is the whole shebang. That's where, that's where you're going to make your trade or you're either going to sidestep it and not get into your trade. Okay. Or not get out of your trade if you're in a trade. And the rule is to get confirmation on the next bar, we need that bar. Okay. Right here to close above the signal bars wick. So you see this little yellow wick sticking out there, this red bar. Okay needed to close above it and it sure did. If it had closed anywhere below the wick over, over here, 
sorry, over here, over here, over here, even over here, that would have been a failed signal, okay? But it didn't, it closed above it, and you can see what happened next, it reversed to the upside. But let's not forget this one here. You also had a topping signal plus a reversal signal, so let's look at this. So the reversal signal and the topping signal, right, the next bars did not close below the wicks of the bars, okay? The reversal signal did not close below the wick of the topping signal, and the next bar after the reversal did not close above the wick here of the reversal candle. Guys, if you can get this little concept, this indicator will work wonders for you, okay? Now, of course, no indicator is perfect. There are still just indicators, right? They use probability and sometimes probability will be wrong. But just look how well this chart plays out. And this is not a cherry pick chart. This is Bitcoin, um, a daily chart, you know, the most most common chart. So let's look at it again from the very start. Let's start right here. You have a topping signal and a reversal signal. The very next bar does not close below the wick, okay? And that's what you need for a confirmation and the orange and yellow mean reversal to the downside. Conversely, it closed above the signal bars. Now, let me tell you another trick that's gonna give you guys a lot of alpha. If the confirmation bar closes in the opposite direction, Remember, we needed this to close below. If it closes in the opposite direction, normally the very opposite happens, okay? Now remember that, because we're gonna use that later on, and I'm gonna show you how you could have sidestepped this whole move right here. But forget about that, now we'll get to that. So here is another reversal signal, and the next bar did close below the wick, and it did confirm a reversal to the downside. We dropped all the way down here to 50,000, came back up, and still dropped again at which point we got another reversal bar. But the next bar, now this is a reversal to the upside, right? The next bar did not close above this wick. And so we got a reversal again to the downside, retesting that $30,000 kind of low area here, right where it closed. But then we got a reversal candle again, right? And you will see that a lot on support or you know against resistance, it will get our, our signals right there a lot of times, right? And that's no coincidence. So we have the reversal bar here. The very next bar, guys, what does it do? It closes right there, which is above the wick. And so we got a reversal to the upside. This one we talked about as well. It also was a failed reversal. It did not go to the downside, so it was a failed reversal. So the opposite happened. This here as well, a failed reversal as the next bar did not confirm it, and the opposite happened. So this is very real, guys. This is like you can use it as another indication. So then let's follow this through. Then we got a local topping signal and a local potential reversal signal. Sure enough, the next bar did close below it, and it wasn't uh, long before we dipped again down all the way to making a new support. We got a reversal bar. Then the next bar confirmed it was to the upside, and so we got a reversal to the upside, just like the turquoise bars indicate. Next, we have a reversal bar to the downside. It's yellow, and the next bar does close below it, well below it, and we are confirmed to the downside. This here, again, reversal bar to the upside. This bar, this next red bar, closed over here, not anywhere above the wick, and we got a reversal to the downside, right? We, I mean, a reversal, we continued this reversal to the downside. Reversal bar, confirmation closes above, goes up, right? Eventually starts to fail, and we have our crash to 30,000. Now, obviously, if you got into a long, right, if you listen to me at all on my streams or anything like that, what I talk about is you always set a stop loss, not on my systems, on any system you trade. As soon as you put in the trade, you set a stop loss. <clears throat> Whether you trail the stop loss up or not, there should have been a stop loss. So right here, right, even if you didn't make a profit, you would have got, you know, closed out at break even or a small loss while taking all these big gains, right? But that's the power in the reversal signals. That's what I'm trying to get across, is that as long as you use the confirmation bars after the reversals or after the topping signals, you will not find a better indicator than this right here, okay? So now that I've taught you guys how to use the system, it's as simple as that. Let's talk about what happened today, because as I said, it will go down in history, and we could have seen how we would have sidestepped this, okay? now. You can see that the bars are red, but before they are red, I'm gonna to explain to you how I trade, you know, a little, little insight into how I trade. 
I have a long-term term portfolio that is on one exchange, and then I have a shorter term uh, scalping portfolio that is on another exchange. Okay, and I use them differently with different systems. If I ever see red bars, I'm never going to take a long position on my big bags, on my long-term holds, okay? But I might do it on my, my smaller positions, on my trading bag that I trade in and out of positions, right? But not on my investments. So here, I, yeah, I might have traded this. I did not trade this, but I could have traded this instead of stop loss, got stopped out, okay? Um, but you would have noticed that the bars are red, okay? So that's trying to tell you that, you know, just like these ones are red here, and then you waited for the green ones, this is still telling you to take caution, to watch out, okay? And not only is it doing that, um, but it breaks through this support here. Once it broke through the support and, and leg down, you should have known that, you know, this was, this was heavily in play. Um, so it's the red bars, guys, that you've got to pay attention to. When they are red, you've got to think to yourself that if you're going to be in the opposite side of the trade, you've got to make sure it's a smaller, smaller position um, and, you know, set your stop losses. But this one was very, very easily avoidable. And as you could have seen, um, you know, we had a reversal signal here. And in the same zone, right, in the same plane, we have a topping signal and reversal. This together should have shown you that there's a lot of weakness in this area. There's a lot of selling pressure in this area, okay? And so forth, right afterwards, you start getting red balls, okay? So that's how you use the indicator to its full potential. And make sure you don't use it as a system, you know, um, where you tie in the reversals and the reds and the greens. Everything on here should be thought of as a separate system in itself. So if you're tr trend trading, look at the red and green bars. If you like to catch strong reversals, you know, look at the reversals. Uh, topping signals you can use to short, you know, but you always set your stop losses, right? So everything has its own little system in here, and it's meant to give you 20-20 vision. Now, what I like to do is I do like to add the high time frame indicator on top of the trend suite, okay? And what this does, did I add it on here? Yeah. What this does is it gives us some more insight into what's happening. So let me make sure I have everything on here. I'm going to go to, um, let's see, momentum bars. I'm going to go to high sensitivity, okay? And let me make sure everything's on. There you go. That's why. Okay. So once we have it on here, Okay, let's see. It is not showing, guys. <laughs> One second. Oh, you know why? Right here. Bear with me. Perfect. Okay, so now that we have the bands on there, and again, these are bands that I've you know recalculated. Um, you can see that the squeezes start the trends. Okay, trends are started in the squeeze. Uh, what really happens is when you have the squeezing area, and I'm going to be reviewing the high time frame because it goes in and ties so well with the other indicator, but I have to show you guys how I got there. So when I first made these uh, indicators, this is what I would trade for, you know, my whole career would be volatility breakouts. Whenever there's high volatility is when it starts the shading area, and then you're going to get a violent move to the upside or downside. You just don't know which direction it is, okay? And that's what the green arrows are for. But I had people telling me, okay, John, well, how come, you know, sometimes it goes up and then it reverses very, very hard? Well, that's because we have an area of high volatility. And that's what led me to also make the reversals. So a lot of times when you do have the shaded area, make sure you pay attention as well to the alpha trend suite that you're not going to print a reversal right after you have your entry signal from the high time frame. Together, they work synergistically very well to give you 20-20 vision. So you would have caught the long here. As soon as you got the reversal, you would have waited for the confirmation, gotten out, shorted if you want to, especially once you saw the red bars, and you would have been in this move. And uh, depending on where you got your stop, maybe you would have got stopped out here for a short move. Maybe you would have stuck in it with the red bars because um, that's what they're meant to do is keep you in the move, just like I did all the way up green, right? So those are a few ways to tie them together. That's how I use them. Uh, but more specifically, that's why the alpha trend reversal signals were made was to also help the uh, squeeze breakouts. They go synergistically. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it answers a lot of questions. And uh, yeah, please share the news. This is uh, an indicator I'm very, very proud of. Um, I can tell you guys where to get it right here as well. If you haven't got it already. One second.
Okay, so you can get it at tradingalpha.io-t. That's where you can get all of these indicators right here. This will take you directly to just the alpha trend indicator. If you want all the indicators in a bundle, we do offer them in a bundle uh, with a 25% discount. And you can find the alpha bundle that has all our indicators to tie in the high time frame plus the alpha trend that I went over today at tradingalpha.io. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Um, you know, good luck to everyone that's stuck in this move. I do think that we're going to be stuck in a consolidation between uh, these two areas. And unless we get some really, really big news, um, I don't think it's going to be a V-shaped recovery just because we have now built so many resistances. But with that, guys, uh, trade safe, and I'll talk to everyone soon. And uh, just uh, I'm on Twitter as well, zero hedge underscore. Just uh, DM me if you have any questions, and I'll catch you guys next time.